It's time to don on your hard hats, everyone. It is 1915, and you are getting ready for your first shift into the world's largest copper mine. This is going to be an adventure you will not want to miss. Okay, so maybe it really What's isn't that? 1950, but this is the Pedrosa Travel Channel, and we are really going to take you half a mile into this copper mine. Welcome to our Queen Mine Tour in Bisbee, Arizona. The town of Bisbee is a fascinating town, but in this video, we are just going to concentrate on the mine tour. Take the drop off. Okay, we have made it here to Bisbee, Arizona. The town of Bisbee, Arizona, we took a small drive. It's a very fascinating place. And now we're at the Copper Queen Mine Tour. So in 1877, they found ore here. They found silver deposits here in 1877. And then later on, they discovered copper here. And the copper was actually more valuable than the gold that was here. And so they continued to mine here until 1975. So we're gonna go check that out. I'm driving the tr I don't know what the I'm mine doing. car train. Don't trust me. It's really easy, just one lever. The wheel is for the steam. Yeah. To go on the Queen Mine Tour, it is highly suggested that you buy your tickets in advance because the tour does sell out. Tickets were sold out the day that we went, but we were prepared. The tour ticket only costs $15 and can be reserved online on their website. Yeah. Right, right when you check in, the history of this place gets deep. The ticket yeah. booth is the remnants of the old mine headquarters no that have been converted into a museum no slash gift shop. Gift shop, lots of rocks, the gift shop. Here we go. Here we go. Got some Mexican paintings there. Okay, all the same thing. Oh, there's Marilyn Monroe. You know it's a Mexican painting if you have Marilyn Monroe. You have three dollars? It was fun exploring the Mexican black velvet paintings, but it was also interesting to see all the displays that they had set up. It was kind of like a museum dedicated to mining. They had a little video you could watch and lots of interesting rocks that have been pulled out of the mine. A bunch of cool rock displays here. Different cool rocks found in the mine. Look at all the quartz. But that's common in the area. Quartz and onyx is very common. Here we have a bunch of copper smelting material here. It's what you use to hammer out the copper. And there's a crucible where you can heat up the copper there, so that's kind of interesting. Bunch of branding irons as well over there. When you register, you sign a safety waiver and they give you this little metal tag, which is important because it has a number on it. And that is how they keep track of you in case you get lost in the mine. The mine tour isn't that dangerous, but it is important to listen to the safety spill. And after we did that, we were given a hard hat a safety go. vest and a light, a light and too. told to report to the trolley train. The tour took us about a half a mile into the mine, which is very deep. But they do a safety check at 100 feet just so that you can get a handle on it. Basically the safety check was something like, you see those big walls of rock surrounding you? If you don't like us, tell us now and we'll walk you out and you'll get your money now but if not you're on your own later luckily I've never been one to get claustrophobic so I just sat there as our mine train took us deeper into the mine along the way to our first stop I could see some shafts they looked like they could go on forever we were told the mine was basically a 10-story building underground our first stop was to the Grand Stope that is spelled S-T-O-P-E. A mining stope is a dugout that follows the reserve of ore. Ore is the rock that surrounds the metal that you're digging out. The grand stope was three stories high and filled with even more train tracks that were used to take out the rocks that were mined in this area. The Queen Mine was once a very active, 
mine, and over 3 million tons of rocks were taken out of the Grand Stope alone. This is not a natural cave. All this space was dug out by the miners by hand. You stood out here with what they call a starter steel and a four pound hammer. Now this was called a single jack. This is what you colored your hole in or start your hole, same thing. Now, every time you hit that, you turned it, you hit it, you turned it, you hit it, because it's got a chisel bit and it would get stuck, but you want a nice clean round hole because dynamite likes round holes. Now once you got started, you would switch. You go to a regular drill still. 12 pound hammer. Whoa. Now this was called a double jack. The reason why, one man's got to hold this steel while the other one swings this hammer. You now you got to remember all they have was candles. 12. But they got very good at it because they knew tomorrow their partner would be swinging it. You mess up today, it's payback tomorrow. <laughs> now it would take them about nine hours to drill six four foot holes. They would load it with dynamite and blast it. The only way they had to get it out of here then is shovel it into a wheelbarrow, tram it all the way down there where that light is, dump it into an ore car. When the ore In addition to learning about how to chisel blasting holes, our tour guide, who was a retired miner, told us about all the various ways miners got injured in the mine, including one guy named John who died and apparently still haunts the mine today. They say this rock formation is a ghostly manifestation of John himself. Oh. AJ wasn't ready for that. I think our tour guide was just like messing with us. And the proof was that right after he was telling us about the 25 different ways that we could die in this mine, he told us that our next stop was the blasting area. This meant that we were going to go even deeper into the mine. At one point, we got off the train and started walking. Under our feet was a more train track. The guide said that back in the day, this part of the tr mine was serviced by donkeys who basically just lived in the mine. I felt sorry for those poor donkeys who never got to come out of the mine and basically ended up blind there. You guys know what kind of rock that is in that ore car? Looks like quartz. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, we did make it to the blasting area, where we saw the dynamite used to blast out the rock. But don't worry, the miner told us that there was no gunpowder in the hole, so nothing was going to happen. At least that's what he told us. We also saw some air-powered drills and a miner toilet. The guide said we could use the toilet if we wanted to, but miner toilets didn't have any privacy, so I passed on that one. Uncle Sam. To Sunrise Shaft, to Culprit's, Culprit's Shaft, and to Uncle Sam Shaft. If you go there, you get recruited. Out of the mines and into the war. Yeah. The tour ended by us taking the train out the way we came. And I have to say I was kind of relieved when I saw daylight again, and I was allowed to return my metal tag. Not that I ever felt like I was really in any danger, but the tour really did give you a good feel of what it was like to be a miner back in the day. We hope you enjoyed this captivating journey through the Queen Mine. This was hands down the best mine tour that I have ever been on. Don't forget to like this video and share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating explorations. Thank you for watching and until next time, stay curious and keep on adventuring.